Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about um, the toxic pollutant mercury and mercury poisoning and how it affects our waterways. And once it gets into the human body, what does it actually do? So we have to look at what the origin of it um, and the great majority of mercury that gets into our environment that becomes an environmental toxicity is going to be released into the environment through the burning of coal. So through the burning of our fossil fuels, it's being released in the smoke and in that air pollution that's going out. Now, what happens is that mercury would go up into the upper atmosphere. It's going to start mixing with water. It's going to get diluted by the water and then fall as precipitation into the environment. And as it falls into, into the environment as precipitation, it's going to go directly into our waterways or it's going to end up running off, in which case it's going to run off into those waterways. Now, it can also infiltrate the soil and get into the soil and then also come up out through the soil. So there's multiple ways that mercury can get into the environment. And mostly it is traveling through the, the vehicle of water. So some of the things that mercury does to the body um, is it's, it can harm, harm the heart, liver, kidneys, immune systems of humans. Um, it does and it's also responsible in higher concentrations for uh, cancers and many different variety of cancers. Um, it does have a huge effect on unborn babies. So at low concentrations, like we looked at our dose response curves, um, we have a higher response in our unborn babies, obviously because they are um, still developing, their immune system is very weak, and the mothers are taking in a higher concentration of it, especially if they're eating certain items. So we'll talk about what those, what those items are in just a little bit. So other organisms can be affected through biomagnification, and we'll talk about that. And that's really how it gets to humans is through the biomagnification. And we're going to do biomagnification in class. So that's a topic that we will actually talk about in person. But that biomagnification as it moves up the food chain is going to increase the concentration of the mercury. So being that we are humans and we are at the higher end of that, we are experiencing a higher amount of that concentration, which means that LC50 becomes a bigger factor then because we're experiencing a much higher concentration of that mercury. So when we look at it here, we can see in our diagram over on the left-hand side is that most of our inorganic mercury is going to be released through the burning of that fossil fuels. It's going to go into the atmosphere where it can either fall um, into our waterways or it can fall onto our ground, in which case it does go through the runoff. It can also be infiltrated into the ground, and then we have natural emissions of it where it can re-enter the environment from land and ocean. So the big thing is, um, or the big ways that we want you to understand it, is that we want you to understand that it does come through the burning of the fossil fuels and it does mix with the at atmospheric uh, water and then falls as some type of precipitation. So just want to go a couple things of uh, how it gets into the body and what it actually does. And the big thing about mercury is that it's a neurological um, defect uh, mechanism. So what it does is it breaks down the neurological pathways. So you have your unborn baby here and the neurons that are developing inside its brain um, are, are developing through that as the, the fetus develops. And these growth cones on the end here is really what gives us a lot of our neurological um, abilities. And so you can see here in the healthy cone, it shows that there's, you know, tubulin and actin that's working in here. You have your neurofibrins. And over here, we have what happens when you have mercury. So you can see it's all disjointed here. The mercury ions are, are disrupting the development of it which in turn is gonna cause some neurological disorders in that developing baby. Now, the number one way that it gets into our mothers is through, since it's gonna be inside of our waterways, it's gonna be through fish and it's gonna be through the things that we eat in seafood. So this is really why most women are told not to eat seafood or not to eat certain types of fish while they're pregnant is because it could open up the potential for mercury because if that waterway was polluted, those fish have taken in a higher concentration of it. So the biomagnification that we'll see in class means that it works its way up the food chain. So the lower things on the food chain are going to have a much smaller amount of concentration. Now, the thing about mercury is it's persistent. It stays inside this body. So once it's inside the body, it stays inside the body. And the only way it gets passed on is when one organism eats another. So if you have a small zooplankton that has some mercury in it and it's eaten by a small fish, the concentration of that will 
go into that fish. You can almost at, think of it as like a bank. The fish, every time it eats one of these zooplankton, it keeps getting more and more mercury and it stays inside that body. Well, a larger fish comes along and eats that fish. Now all that mercury is now going to be transferred or most of that mercury is going to be transferred to the next organism. So the concentration gets even higher. That's where you get that biomagnification, the word biomagnification. And eventually it works its way up the food chain. So the organisms at the higher end of it, like in this picture here, this bird, the seagull or whatever it is, and then humans that are catching this fish are actually prone to the highest concentration of the, the mercury. So it becomes a really big issue if you are carrying a baby, you don't want that high concentration because as we saw in those dose response curves, a higher concentration means a higher response. So if the response is a neurological disorder, we obviously don't want the child to experience that.